Hello, everybody. Welcome to this special edition of WDKYT Game Time Selection Sunday. Rob Bromley with Dave Baker and Lee K. Howard is also with us. How about that? How about a great day for a little <laughs> hour less of sleep? Uh, the Wildcats are the champions of the SEC tournament and a number four seed, and they're heading for Des Moines. Now the Wildcats open play at the Wells Fargo Arena in Des Moines, taking on the Sea Wolves of Stony Brook out of the state of New York. They will play Thursday at about 9.45 on CBS and here on WKYT. Rob, as always, the players gathered at the home of their head coach after returning from Nashville. Media members invited as well. And as you can see, the reaction of the players was, to say the least, underwhelming. Although you couldn't blame them for being tired after that overtime win in Nashville earlier today. Their coach, frankly, did not like the draw, but knows there's nothing he can do about it. But this out is, it's every year the same. And you look at some other teams, they got a great path, and we got this, you know. I bet you they'll try to switch over, put the Warriors in there. I don't know if they can make a late, late call. But we're, we're playing. Let's show up. Where is it? Where are we playing? I thought it was Anchorage. Uh, I really don't know how all that stuff works, you know, but um, it is what it is, you know. We got to play all these games anyway, so let's get them out the way. We've been battle tested like this before where we had to have a quick turnaround and um, we've had this multiple times in the season, so I think we'll be uh, ready and fine, totally fine with it. All right, on Saturday, Stony Brook hosting the America East Championship against Vermont. In the first half, it is all Stony Brook's Jameel Warney. He gets the ball in the lane for the slam. Late in the game, Stony Brook up by five. Vermont's Darren Painan catches the rebound off the rim, throws it down to make it a three-point game. Stony had the answer. Ahmad Walker misses the layup, but Warney is there for the putback jumper. He finished with 43 points, Dave. Over half the team's total points and yes, punches. Sir. The Seawolves' first NCAA tournament ticket in school history. Stony Brook becoming Division I in 1999. The Wolves watching the selection show in their arena. This was the reaction when Brian Secunda, a sophomore guard, saw the matchup. Couldn't figure out what that was. I guess that's a piece of net on his hat. In their first trip, they draw Kentucky, but the Wolves happy nonetheless. <laughs> the bracket that leaked early in the evening took a lot of the suspense out of the two-hour CBS show. John Calipari and his staff knew well ahead of time the Wildcats were going to play and where, and they weren't too happy about it. By the time the UK coach appeared nationally on ESPN, it sounded as though he'd come to terms with it. My team is playing as well as they've played. It doesn't matter who you put us against. We're, the greatest thing at the end of the day, you got to play the games. You can't worry about, well, we may play them. They may lose. So, uh, again, I've done this 30 years. I am getting old. I've done this 30 years. I've seen it all. I've heard it all. I mean, I can remember being the one seed and having to play Texas in Houston. Being the one seed, having to play A&M in San Antonio, being the one seed having to play UCLA in California. I remember all that. That doesn't pass my mind. I mean, we, it's, we've never had it easy, and I don't want it easy. Let's go. Let's play this thing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> for more reaction to the Wildcats draw, we turn to UK All-American Mike Pratt, the color analyst for the UK Radio Network. And he talked with our Dick Gabriel about the toughness of the East Bracket with Kentucky, North Carolina, and Indiana. And Xavier, who's a, a really a good ball club and, and could could really be a factor, and of course West Virginia, they might have a little uh, something to call revenge after last year's NCAA game, right? Absolutely. So that that is a real tough bracket, no question, no question. Of course, it's all about how well you're playing right now. Do you think? And it seems pretty evident that Kentucky is playing its best basketball when it needs to the most? I think they really are. I think they're playing very well. They've uh, they found out how to win, given a, uh, you know, a very average performance in the first half against Alabama. They came back and they won uh, against a the team they had beaten badly, so they were able to, to pull that one out. And then today, down the stretch, they made the right play, um, both, both ends of the floor against a very good club. And so they're, 
if they're learning how to win, playing very well, it, it still gets down to, I think, one thing, what that group of big players can do collectively. I think that's what it gets down to. And you can't expect them, Gabe, to, to really um, – put big numbers up there if they're always in foul trouble. The legend of Tyler Eulis grew again today. You know, and here's a guy still playing, and yet he seems he seems legendary. You know, the nation is finding out more and more about him. Uh, just how special is this guy, Mike? He's one of a kind. Um, point guards, there's a lot of point guards can handle the ball. Maybe not as good as Tyler Eulis, but I mean, can handle it really well. And there's a lot of them that can play defense. And um, how many of them, though, can make shots like he does from various places on the floor? I think that's what separates him. He can get into the paint with a little runner. He can stop at the, at the charity stripe and knock down the jumper. And he can knock down the long-range uh, three. I mean, he, he pulls it all together. And then for a guy his size, man, I'm telling you what, um, he's just he is just really fun to watch. Biggest little man in college basketball. Thanks, Dick. When we come back, we'll break down the brackets. There's more to come on Selection Sunday here on WKYT. For years, you have thought about building your dream home. What are you waiting for? You can make it happen, and we can help. Community Trust Bank. Do you need a loan? Buying a new energy-efficient refrigerator or freezer? Well, get paid to upgrade. Let our Energy Star Appliance Rebate Program help you earn cash back on a range of Energy Star certified appliances. Just visit our website to see how to get paid to upgrade. Inner County Energy and Bluegrass Energy, your Touchstone Energy Cooperatives. If your child ever asks, where do sandwiches come from, tell them the truth. Look them straight in the eyes and tell them, sandwiches come from Arby's. And if they ask where the loaded Italian and its many meats come from, kindly respond. What part of Arby's didn't you understand, Giuseppe? The loaded Italian sandwich. Arby's, we have the meats. For years, you have thought about building your dream home. What are you waiting for? You can make it happen, and we can help. Community Trust Bank, do you need a loan? Take the short drive to satisfaction. Tim Short Chevrolet. And welcome back, everybody. It is Selection Sunday. We know Kentucky is part of the East Region. Let's take a look at the rest of the bracket, and it is a difficult one. North Carolina, the number one seed, taking on the winner of one of the first four games. Southern Cal coming on strong in the Pac-12, facing Providence. Indiana with a big season, but the Hoosiers seed at number five, facing Chattanooga, and then potentially the Wildcats. In the east lower bracket, Notre Dame facing Michigan or Tulsa. West Virginia takes on Stephen F. Austin. Wisconsin plays Pitt. Xavier takes on Weber State. Rob, in terms of the uh, top half of the bracket, one thing I don't think people ought to do is they should not sleep on Chattanooga. They're like 25-5. and five. Matt McCall is a former Billy Donovan assistant. They got some big wins this year, and Indiana's certainly shown they can be vulnerable. It's tough, but you just got to go out and go through it. You know, what I remember a lot is 2011 when Kentucky was in that bracket with, with North Carolina right. and Ohio State. You got North Carolina ranked number three in the country, Ohio State number one. They got to be both of them to get to the final four, and they did it in Newark. It was tremendous. In the South, top seeded Kansas and Austin P, and then Colorado and Yukon, Maryland taking on South Dakota State. And the Golden Bears of California facing Hawaii. At the bottom of the bracket, Arizona plays either Vandy or Wichita State, who will play in that playing game. The Hurricanes of Miami and Buffalo. Iowa meets Temple and another Philly based team, second seeded Villanova and UNC Asheville. To me, the biggest question there on the brackets is Villanova. They lost two straight years as either the number one or the number two seed in a region. They're number two again this year. The question is, do they have that first round, first, second round jinx figured out? 
They're physical, but I, I don't think they've gone through the level of competition that some of the other teams in this bracket have. I think they're seated a little bit too high. Well, and, and the way they've played the last couple of years, there's no question. And so they've got to figure out how to, how to solve that mystery, else there'll be another upset. All right, in the West, the Red Hot Oregon Ducks taking on a first-round survivor, Holy Cross or Southern. St. Joe's and UC in the 8-9 game. Baylor taking on the Ivy League champion, Yale. And fourth-seeded Duke against UNC Wilmington. In the bottom half of the bracket, the Longhorns and a dangerous Northern Iowa team. Third seeded Texas A&M versus Wisconsin Green Bay. Oregon State meeting VCU and second seeded Oklahoma meets Cal State Bakerfield. Everybody likes Buddy Heald in Oklahoma. Of course, uh, it was uh, UT Chattanooga that got a win over them earlier this year. And I'm telling you, Oregon, I saw them early in the season just win by an eyelash yeah. over Alabama down in Birmingham. A lot of people think Oregon's overrated. I, I really like Oklahoma, though. I think they're for real. They I have had a uh, big-time year. There. They've been up and down. They've survived some losses, but they certainly deserve where they are. All right, in the Midwest, Virginia, the top seed taking on Hampton. Tubby Smith's Texas Tech Red Raiders go against Butler. Purdue facing Arkansas, Little Rock, fourth seed at Iowa State, plays Iona. And in the Midwest Lower, Seton Hall, surprise winner of the Big East Tournament, playing Kyle Wilcher and Gonzaga. Utah meeting Fresno State. Number seven, Dayton, taking on Syracuse, who was a surprise to many to get in the field. And Michigan State Spartans versus Conference USA champ, Middle Tennessee. Gonzaga in there for the 18th straight year. And Seton Hall, a team that had to beat Providence and... Uh, I'll get it. They, they had to win two big games, Providence, Villanova, in the Big East Tournament. Looks like the easiest bracket to me. Think so? Out of the four. Yeah, I think so. I, I think so. I think East is definitely the toughest. I would say the Midwest uh, looks to be easier than the South and the West. We will move forward now. When we come back, we revisit another successful big blue trip to Nashville. More coming up here on Selection Sunday on WDKYT. Folks are loving is the ocean's greatest haul. McDonald's filet o fish, the most golden of them all. Right now, get two flaky filet o fish sandwiches for just five dollars. It's about my heart and my heart. It's about my husband's heart. The heart team at St. Joseph Hospital has a long history of saving lives. Today, our surgeons and cardiologists are working side by side. From groundbreaking advancements in valve replacement to life-saving heart surgery for patients not strong enough for open heart surgery. When it comes to your heart, St. Joseph is a clear choice. It's a clear choice for me. The AOP has had its eye on her for quite some time. We were just waiting for the right moment to move in. The vibe was anything but playful. Go, go, okay. We knew we had to move in fast, but there was a crowd, so we had to play it cool. This is where the years of training paid off. We got the scratch-off ticket to her in the nick of time. We're agents to play, man. People think this job is all fun and games, but we take our fun seriously. That's what being an agent of play is all about. Thank you. Just doing our job. Put a little play in your day with scratch-offs from the Kentucky Lottery. Fueling imagination, funding education. When it comes to your heart, there's one team that's leading the way to better care in the area. Baptist Health. Our team exceeds national standards for heart attack care and has been recognized with top quality ratings for cardiac surgery. From clinical research trials to advanced imaging and surgical options, our heart specialists provide nationally recognized comprehensive care right here at Baptist Health. Folks have been taking this short drive to satisfaction for over 20 years. Folks from everywhere come here, not just from here in Winchester, and who wouldn't come here? With over 2,500 vehicles to choose from here in Winchester, Kentucky. No matter if it's 100 miles or the short drive from Lexington, our staff will help you start your journey. Tim Short Chevrolet. Wake up with a hot McCafe coffee starting at only one dollar. 
Earlier today in Nashville, the Cats celebrating their 29th SEC Tournament Championship after their overtime win over Texas A&M. Here to tell us how the drama unfolded is Lee K. Howard. Hey guys, yeah, the Wildcats are SEC champions for a second year in a row, and as Rob said, a record 29 conference titles for Kentucky, but they had to battle to get the win over a gritty Texas A&M squad. Pick it up in the first half. Both teams starting off strong. First play of the game, Scalabissier throws the alley-oop to Jamal Murray. Kentucky was on the board first. A&M would respond with the inbounds lob to Jalen Jones. I tell you what, both teams trading punches throughout this one. Later, Tyler Eulis to Marcus Lee. How many times have we seen that this year? Alley oop is good. Just over five minutes to play in the half. Eulis pulls up for the three in transition, ties the game at 28. But the Wildcats were down by four at the break. Go to the second half. Wildcats now on top by one. Eulis. That's going to be a felony in the state of Tennessee. Goes the other way for the bucket. It's a three-point Kentucky lead. Billy Kennedy, he needs a timeout. Same score. Euless with the alley. Alex Poitras with the oop. Poitras had 10 points despite battling some foul trouble. Game tied at 50. Daniel House drives in for the layup and the foul. He just wasn't going to let his Aggies go away. A&M up three after the free throw. Kentucky down one. Euless. Knocks down the big three-pointer. Wildcats up two, under a minute left in the game. Aggies down by two. Who else? It's House. Drives in, hits the shot. Game tied at 71. Kentucky with a shot for the win at the end of regulation. Euless gets it off, but he can't get it to drop. We're going to overtime in OT. Euless. Look at that nice little move. Step back three-pointer. Steph Curry is jealous. Wildcats out in front. Under two minutes to play. Daniel House ties the game again with a three-pointer. Both teams nodded at 75, and so are the stomachs of the Big Blue Nation. Then Derek Willis, the biggest shot of his career. A three to put Kentucky out in front for good 78-75. And how about the Blue Arrow himself? Jamal Murray. A quiet game by his standards, but hits a huge three-pointer. And that is the winner. Kentucky wins the SEC championship 82 to 77 in overtime. For the first time in school history, UK had five players scoring double figures in an SEC tournament championship game. All we were going to do late in the game is play through him. I was telling Jamal, if you have a shot, you take it. If you don't, you're giving it to Tyler and we'll play off of him. Um, and, you know, he is. The good news is there's been games that he and Jamal have played this many minutes, so they were able to, you know, withstand it. And I looked at him a couple times, you need a break, and they're like, both of them, like, nope, not me. Oh, you know, it's a good feeling. Um, we came together as a team, and, and we fought hard all season, and, you know, it's been a journey. And, um, you know, we trusted coach all the way and, and trusted our, our point guard, so, you know, it's, it's up to them to lead us again. It's a great feeling getting this win, especially they came out and fought hard. Uh, the house, he made some big shots at the end. And, you know, Derek made a big shot. Jamal made a big shot. And, you know, everybody fought at the end, and it's a great win for us. Of course, Kentucky wasn't the only Southeastern Conference team to land a berth in the NCAA tournament. Vanderbilt is one of the final teams. Yeah, 11 seed, they will take on Wichita State in that play in game. And then here's the controversy. Texas A&M, a three seed, despite finishing the season with an identical 26-8 and eight record as the Kentucky Wildcats, and of course, losing to the Wildcats in the SEC championship game earlier today. And in case you're wondering about how A&M is seated higher, well, that always makes it tough. But uh, again, through the scrubbing process, you know, Kentucky had some losses against teams that aren't even in the field. And compared uh, as they were through the uh, uh, process of evaluating the teams, the committee felt like A&M deserved their place. So basically, head-to-head -head didn't mean a, mean a thing. Meanwhile, Purdue and Michigan State in the Big Ten Championship game earlier today. Closing seconds of the first half, Spartans Denzel Valentine with the bucket. Sparty led by 10 at the half. Second half, A.J. Hammonds with the hammer and one. The Boilermakers cut it to as close as one point, but Valentine and his Michigan State Spartans put away Purdue. 66-62 the final. They're a number two seed in the Midwest. More from the Wildcats coming up still ahead. March Madness isn't just for the guys. The UK women are also looking forward to postseason tournament play. We'll talk high school as well and some small college. Stay with us. Rob and Dave are back with more Selection Sunday right here on WKYT. Make time this spring to escape to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where the only thing you'll want to do is have fun in the sun. 
Let the sound of the ocean's tide take all your cares away and leave you refreshed to experience something new. It's your moment to let go and unwind on Myrtle Beach Time. Let go and unwind on Myrtle Beach Time. Value City Furniture presents how to buy the perfect mattress. First, ask yourself, are you avoiding shopping for a new mattress because you think mattress shopping is anything but a comfortable experience? Wake up and head to Value City Furniture. Our unique three-step process makes finding the perfect Serta or Beautyrest mattress so easy, you can almost do it in your sleep. Oh, wow. Perfect. And that's how to buy the perfect piece at Value City Furniture. Hi, checking out the RAV4? Yep, looking for something fun. Well, with available sport tune suspension, you can turn any trip into an awesome adventure. Yeah! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Yeah! Errands. Aren't they the best? Now, during Toyota's One for Everyone sales event, get 0.9% financing for 60 months on the adventurous 2016 RAV4. Or lease one now for just $199 a month. Have fun running those errands. Toyota, let's go places. All across America, families are coming back to Time Warner Cable for a whole new experience. We came back for internet speed so fast, even the kids are impressed. Oh, she's impressed. We're catching up on movies and shows on demand just as fast as we can watch them. TWC's home Wi-Fi is so strong, we can use all our devices at the same time. Come back today. You'll get 30 meg internet, TV, phone, and more for $89.99 a month. And ask how you could get a $300 reward card. Call now. Join Morning Point Foundation as it hosts an evening with Kim Campbell, wife of country music legend Glenn Campbell. Kim will share her message of hope about her family's personal journey with Alzheimer's disease. This free public awareness event takes place March 15th at 7 o'clock at Ashland Avenue Baptist Church in Lexington. To reserve your spot, visit MorningPointFoundation.com or call today. Matthew Mitchell and the UK Women will soon learn their NCAA destination. The Women's Selection Show is scheduled for tomorrow night. Rob, the Wildcats were knocked out of the SEC tournament by South Carolina in the semifinals, but not before reeling off eight straight wins. Mitchell thinks his team will be at least a number four seed. I don't know how we wouldn't be with the resume that we have, So, but I don't really focus on those things. I have zero control. so. We just try to stay real focused on the things that we have control over, our attitude, our effort. Um, they've come a long way as a basketball team, and they're great young women and uh, first-class people, and uh, I, I, I love coaching this team. The boys' Sweet 16 gets underway at Rupp Arena on Wednesday. Let's take a look at the brackets in the upper bracket. Buckhorn and Murray open the tournament at noon on Wednesday, followed by Trinity and Newport Central Catholic. Dunbar and Mercer County, top two teams in the state, close the Wednesday session at 8 in what should be one of the best games of the opening round in a long time. And Bowling Green and Elliott County are at 6.30. And we look at the bottom half again. The KHSAA here taking into account the distance as some of the schools have to drive on Thursday. It is Lawrence County and Doss at noon and then Mason County and Taylor County at 6.30. South Laurel and Christian County at 1.30 Thursday. South Oldham and Owensboro Catholic in the nightcap Thursday. South Laurel and Franklin County. These schools, Franklin County playing in the finals of the girls' Sweet 16 this afternoon, taking on Butler off a no look pass. Molly Lockhart scores for Butler. Franklin County fell behind 15 zip. But the seventh grader, Brooklyn Miles, off the bench for six first half points right before the buzzer. The putback by Savannah Courtney cuts the lead to just 10. 24-14, but the second half started just like the first. Butler scores the first 14 of the second half. The best season in school history for Franklin County comes up one win short. Butler is the state champ, 62 to 36. We got back on our heels both halves. First half, we were a little bit timid. Second half, we just weren't really efficient. We settled for a lot of stuff that cost us. It'll hurt, you know, feel like you're cutting your guts out for a few hours, but 
they'll look back on it, cherish it. They, they understand what they've accomplished. Of course, Kentucky teams always well represented in the NAIA National Tournament. Here's a look at the Kentucky teams in that tournament. Four teams, each in a different quadrant of the bracket. The Cumberlands making their 24th appearance in the National Tournament. They will face Langston, Oklahoma at 10 a.m. on day one. Georgetown College, the 2013 National Champs, they're the number one overall seed at 28-3. They're ranked number one in the country, making a record 25th appearance in the National Tournament. That's 25 in a row. They'll face Wayland Baptist on Wednesday day at 6:15. Also from the mid south, it's Campbellsville, a 6 seed. They'll face Texas Wesleyan on Thursday at 10 a.m. and Pikeville, a 2 seed. They'll face William Jessup out of California at 5:30. Coming up, more from John Calipari and another look at Kentucky's bracket. More to come. Hey, it's still Selection Sunday here on WKYT. I wasn't too thrilled about dentures, but I need to be able to chew. So I called Aspen Dental, they got me right in because my visit was long overdue. And no one on staff even made me feel bad that I had been in since the leg warmer bed. My new dentures came with a great guarantee, so this giant pretzel's got nothing on me. With dentures starting at $3.99 and a money back guarantee, dentistry's never been easier. Call 1-800-ASPEN DENTAL. By 2020, 56% of Kentucky jobs will require either a college certificate or a college degree. But only one in four public college students will graduate on time, and many may not finish at all. You can put the odds in your favor. Just earn 15 credits each semester, or 30 a year, to finish on time, and save money on tuition. Talk to your advisor and make a plan. Kentucky's colleges and universities agree. Take 15 to finish on time. Get in, get out, get going. I've covered thousands of games over decades. You think you can beat me? Come on. Challenge Dave Baker and make your picks to play the Hoops Hysteria Tournament Pick'em Game on WKYT.com. Enter now for your chance to win a 65-inch LG 4K Smart TV. For official rules, visit WKYT.com and click on the contest tab. Must be 18 years old to enter and live in the WKYT viewing area. Hoops Hysteria, brought to you by Paul Miller Ford, Bluegrass Home Entertainment, Central Bank, and Arby's. Everybody in the pool. A new swimming pool in your backyard this summer means double the fun for your family. What better way to keep the kids entertained? Think you can't afford it? Then think again. The big 15 by 24 Econoline pool from Blue World Pools is only $3.99. Yes, $3.99, and that super low price includes pump, filter, liner, ladder, and a free automatic pool vacuum. That's right, all that fun, only $3.99. But that's not all. That price even includes installation on your ready site. What a deal! You may choose to step up to the next level with our midline pool or really turn your backyard into a summer party paradise with the classic pool from Blue World Pools. Our top-of-the-line classic is famous for its low maintenance and high-style beauty. Nothing brings the family together like a backyard pool. The summer barbecues, the parties, or just hanging out and cooling off on yet another sweltering summer day. Beat that heat. Call Blue World Pools now and get your party started. And welcome back. Selection Sunday winding down now. The field of 68 set for the NCAA tournament, and you will see a lot of it right here on WKYT. Including the Wildcats' first game facing Stony Brook, the Seawolves, 945 Thursday night in Des Moines. It'll be the second game of that pod, and you can see it on WKYT. Again, we expect tip about 940 or so. And if they win that one, a chance they'll take on Tom Crean's Indiana Hoosiers. Winner of that one goes on to the regional semifinals in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Kentucky seeding will be debated until the games begin and maybe even beyond. The players mentioned earlier that they're not worried about it. John Calipari said he hadn't spoken to them yet and that he couldn't imagine the discussion lasting too long. I'll ask them what do you guys think about it because I don't you know what do you think they'll probably say I don't care where's the uh, is there a sandwich anywhere I'm hungry. So if they don't care truly I don't care let's go play the games. I don't think they, a couple of them probably didn't even know what it meant. We got some guys starting from the United States, so they're probably figuring out what is all this. 
<laughs> Three SEC teams got into the NIT. Sean Woods and Moorhead State go to the CBI tournament. They'll take on Siena Tuesday night. It is going to be fun, and it's going to be interesting, that's for sure. Thanks for joining us. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 4.30 a.m. And remember, your news is always on WDKYT.com. For Dave Baker and Lee K. Howard, I'm Rob Robley. Good night, everybody.